The Marvels was the biggest flop in MCU history, and it would appear that Brie Larson, the star who was sidelined by not just one, but two other Marvels in what should have been her own movie, is none too pleased with the whole experience. Because if looks could kill, the journalist who just asked what Brie would be doing for Marvel next would be six feet under. This story comes to us from comicbookmovie.com. The Marvel star Brie Larson shares a blunt response when asked about her future as Captain Marvel, and their write-up reads, with a so-so 62% on Rotten Tomatoes and a mere 206 million at the worldwide box office. The Marvels failed to live up to expectations last November, and is now Marvel Studios' lowest grossing movie. It's still hard to say where it all went wrong. Captain Marvel grossed over 1 billion in 2019, and both Miss Marvel and Photon had taken center stage in two critically acclaimed Disney Plus TV shows that no one watched. That right there only goes to show that comicbookmovie.com is entertainment media complex adjacent, and down with the narrative and the message because otherwise, it would have been very easy for them to say where it went wrong, namely, in putting Captain Marvel into the MCU in the first place. You see, there was never a story reason why the character had to be there. For all the other characters up till that point, there was a story reason to include them, because they were there in the original stories, and so for the on-screen retelling, they were also needed. Not so with Brie Larson's Captain Marvel. She was awkwardly forced in because Kevin Feige wanted to signal his virtue and because Bob Iger wanted to siphon off of that virtue, and for literally no other reason. This is even stated between the lines of the MCU book by Joanna Robinson. There have been many different iterations of Captain Marvel in the comics over the years, but for maximum virtue signaling purposes, they went with the current year version from the Big Red of comics, Kelly Sue the Conic. And if you don't like my politics, don't buy my book. Problem solved. The MCU book relays the first meeting between Feige and the Conic, because right off the bat, Marvel were struggling with how to incorporate Captain Marvel. So Kevin Feige asked the writer how this Captain Marvel is different from, say, Captain America, who will also never give up, telling his foes he could do this all day. So how are the two different? To which the comic replied, and I'm paraphrasing here, that while Captain America won't give up because he's just that good of heart, Captain Marvel won't give up because she's a mean, entitled bitch, and because fuck you, that's why. Again, that was me paraphrasing, she didn't actually say that. Or that is, she did, only in different words. The comic's exact words were that Captain Marvel won't give up because she's, and I quote, full of piss and vinegar, and because fuck you. And yes, those were her exact words. You see, Captain Marvel is written to be sassy in the way that activists like the comic think is empowering and endearing, but which to normal people is just off-putting. Even so, that's how the character was written, and that's how Brie Larson portrayed her, in a manner which normal, well-adjusted people find to be both entitled and deeply unlikable. So, how could a movie with such an unlikable hero, and I use the term lightly, do more than a billion? Easy, it's not just that it opened between Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. Ant-Man and the Wasp did that too, and that did not cross a billion. But here's the thing, it's because Infinity War ended on the biggest cliffhanger in film history, and with a post credit scene which promised that Captain Marvel would be instrumental to understanding the resolution of that cliffhanger. That's why Captain Marvel crossed one billion. It's not because Captain Marvel the character won over the hearts and minds of anyone, because she didn't. Captain Marvel was always Feige's folly, and the first foray into the MCU, which in time would destroy the MCU, as evident by the massive failure of the Marvels. This really isn't hard to understand, but publications that want to be on good terms with the studios still feign ignorance over what could possibly have gone wrong. They know, they just don't want to admit the obvious. 
Case in point, moving on with the article, they pretend to guess at what other than what should be blatantly obvious may have gone wrong with the Marvels. We can take some guesses, of course. Captain Marvel should probably have been somewhere in the title, while the marketing campaign definitely underwhelmed. As for the movie itself, the story felt too small in scale and ultimately wasn't the sort of massive event which gets people into theaters these days. Well, that was a pathetic excuse, seeing as the trailers promised another Thanos. And even if that turned out to be a lie, the movie was plenty big in scope. The audience just had had it up to here with all the forced representation and inclusion on screen. The ones who were supposed to be uplifted by seeing themselves represented had long since checked out. Moving on with the article, Carol Danvers actress Brie Larson has spent years fending off sexist trolls online and seems to have grown disillusioned with her place in the MCU. Last year, comments of the Oscar winner wondering whether anyone wanted her back as Captain Marvel quickly went vital. First of all, she hasn't been subject to any more vitriol than Jared Leto was over both his Joker and later Morbius. So are we suggesting the backlash against him was sexist too? Or is that a defense reserved for women only, even though they're treated the same as male actors whose performances also detract from movies with a heavy fan following? I mean, it's Kevin Feige's fault for forcing her into the MCU in the first place, because she should honestly never have been there to begin with. So granted, Kevin Feige is more rightfully deserving of the flack than she is. But let's just fast forward to what this is all about, namely a comment that was made on a red carpet interview. Very quickly, very Marvel. Yeah, I just know which is which. Can you tell us a little bit, bit about Marvel and what's coming up for you, your next Marvel project? I don't have anything to say about that. And that's the basis for this article, and I'm sure there will be many others to boot. So, what can be gleamed from this? Is Brie Larson really done with the MCU? No, we can't say that based on this. For all we know, she could be, and probably is, locked in for more appearances, including in the upcoming Avengers movies. Probably, what we just saw of her reaction here is a mix between that she can't talk about this because of contractual stipulations, and that she's so embarrassed to be associated with the massive flop that was the Marvels that she just doesn't want to talk about it and wants to end this and move on. Beyond that, this doesn't mean anything. As we've already seen, Marvel has kind of promised that they're quietly retooling, only without changing literally anything. And based on that, I don't think we're done with Captain Marvel, or indeed any of the other Marvels for that matter, just yet. What do you think? Let me know in the comments.